Hey guys, how are you? I had quite a few people requesting to give a rundown of my 110 Defender Milka, my Tura. And uh, finally I thought I'd get stuck into it and uh, start with it. I'm here at uh, Udell's hut, which couldn't be a much prettier place really to show you around my Tura. Okay guys, let's start uh, with the back. So I've got uh, two 30 watt uh, LED lights up here which uh, have a little secret switch to switch on and off. They can also be switched on and off from the cabin. Then there's a Hannibal ladder here which lets me if the awning is down up on the roof. In this side here I have a 44 liter water tank yeah, which is filled from the outside. Most people have actually filler from the inside but I didn't want to have yeah mess and water in there so I decided to get for an outside filler with a lock cap then the lights are all replaced with LEDs I have a Heyman Reese um, rear bar with Anderson plug and the trailer plug all nice and up not underneath where you pretty much scrape them right away if we look a little bit underneath, there's a long range, uh, long range fuel tank. Um, you need the Heyman Reese um, rear bar for that fuel tank. That alone gives me 130 liters, roughly 127 liters. So underneath, hidden here, is a secondary fuel tank, which uh, gives me an additional 44 liters of fuel. And uh, the fuel feeds into the main tank, so there is no pump, it's all gravity fed. And with one single filler. Got a little filler cap here uh, in front of it to prevent all the dust settling. Uh, most of you know if you have a defender that's pretty much a cutout here and a magnet for dust. Then I have a, I think that's a Scorpion rear wheel carrier uh, to deal with the 35s. That is very strong, greasable. It also um, houses the high lift jack. Yeah, something simple but very important. Rear wheel wheelie bin uh, pretty much. I tested a couple of them and I never liked them really because they either broke too quickly so I decided to get my own one made that is out of army surplus material very strong and yeah has lasted me now for three years no matter what I carry in it. The Bundutech awning uh, 180 degrees has served me very well it pretty much protects the rear of the car it protects also the front of the car and is the biggest awning I've seen so far. Um, in rain I can comfortably have my stretcher underneath, have a chair, have a table. So yeah, beautiful uh, piece of cover I would say. Both side windows are replaced with front runner gull wings and again for me that's a must-have pretty much. This gives me direct access to the fridge as well as to my lighting panels. So each galving has a light on each side, an LED light. And that means if I have to cook here, I'll pack it's all pretty straightforward. I've got the extended wheel arches here, which uh, accommodate the bigger tires and 110 millimeter um, track width increase. As tires, I'm running BFG KM2s, which is a mud terrain tire but uh, behaves pretty well also on road. That's a nearly 35 inch tire. I've got the Maxi Drive heavy duty axle caps. The mud flaps are converted, actually that is just from uh, Clark rubber, some heavy duty rubber because the standard flaps pretty much uh, yeah, go astray quite often. I also have some uh, sill protection here, which yeah, doesn't do too much, but helps a little bit. Yeah, the rock sliders uh, are custom sliders which are heavy duty and uh, fish plated to the chassis. And they connect to the brush bars which obviously link to the bull bar. The bull bar is a terra firma bull bar which I had uh, modified with a little bit different design and to accommodate the brush bars. I run uh, twin UHFs, that means twin aerial mounts, and on the side here I have a mount for the sand flag. This is a snow cowl, 
which pretty much prevents uh, rain and so on going right into the air condition intake. I'm running two 60 watt LED lights down here. Also the indicator and park lights all have been converted to LED as well as uh, main headlights. They are JB speaker LED conversions. Yeah, as main driving lights um, for the open road would be the Firelight uh, Nemesis, which are very, very bright. Um, yeah, they have outshone everything I've tested against so far. Here we have the winch, a worn XP9500 with Dyneema rope, which quite importantly I have high mounted. I personally do not like to have the winches mounted underneath the, the protection because it becomes very difficult to service and see the rope. Here everything is easy accessible. I lose four bolts, a couple of cables and the winch can be taken out and uh, can be serviced. So quite important for me. Got two bash plates here that's five millimeter aluminium and another one here five millimeter aluminium which protects here yeah, the steering components. In regards to the front axle, that is a maxi drive vacuum locker with maxi drive axles and heavy duty army spec county CVs. Yeah, suspension wise, um, I had the car with Ultimate Suspension who pretty much measured every corner and then set up the suspension according to the vehicle. It has a three inch lift and has served me quite well. And that's a terra firma diff protector. Yeah, under the bonnet, I'm pretty much running here the worn remote controller for the winch. So the I have remote for the winch in the car. That makes it quite a bit easier. Then I have a VVT variable vane raised turbo in it um, with a different boost box. The Defender has the batteries notoriously not under the bonnet, but under the driver's seat. So these are remote terminals. I also have a cutoff switch here for all power. I've got a pro vent here, which pretty much uh, prevents excess or any oil going into the turbo and burning in the turbo. So it should uh, make the engine everything last a bit longer. Because my knees are not the best, I also have an aftermarket clutch booster here, which uh, reduces the clutch pressure needed quite substantially. The diff breathers, transmission breathers are all pretty much um, coming here out in the engine bay and I extend it for deeper water fording. This is a Safari raised air intake which is sealed so if need to be can be used as a snorkel. On top we have a 220 watt uh, light bar for close up four wheel driving to illuminate right in front of me. It's a pretty good combination together with the other lights. On top of the roof is a fixed mounted 100 watt uh, solar panel which feeds to the three batteries inside. All the power to the roof pretty much comes from the back via one, one cable. It's got a secondary awning here which I usually put up if there's a lot of wind because I don't mind losing it and I can strap it down and put very low. It's just big enough to fit my stretcher underneath but it works quite well. At the back we have another maxi drive vacuum locker including a diff protection plate. Yeah I also have a deep thinned uh, oil pan which gives additional oil capacity. Heavy duty maxi drive axles in it then cranked rear radius arms to accommodate the three inch lift. Got a catch can here for the pro vent so I don't feed the oil back in. I drain that once a month and it's quite astonishing how much really uh, ends up there which otherwise would be burned somewhere it shouldn't be burned. Terra firma front radius arms with the caster correction again to accommodate the three inch lift. The whole chassis is laminated with a three millimeter steel plate to give extra strength and rigidity. Uh, the extended fuel tank pretty much has the feeding hose and joint here for the secondary tank. And 
that is by default not very well protected. So I had actually a stone puncturing that here and breaking uh, the L connection. So I had uh, someone fabricating a protection guard pretty much which goes underneath. I've got a reverse camera here. Then here's an additional step to make it a bit easier to get on the roof and the tap here which connects to the water tank and gives running water. That's also a quick uh, release bracket here. If I want to take that awning off it's pretty much just releasing that and pulling the awning off. I also have a 600 watt inverter here and a battery charger which I have main. If I have mains power I can plug in. Underneath here is a third battery. The other two batteries are under the passenger seat. So here you see the worn winch remote controller, the front and rear locker. This is uh, the turbo timer and a third party cruise control, which makes long highway drives quite comfortable. I'm running two UHFs just in case. One is here, that's a GME and an ICOM here. Why do I run two UHFs? Um, first of all, so I can monitor other channels and don't uh, need to leave the group channel. And also, yeah, in, if one of them fails. You see my mapping software here. I've got um, running an iPad mini here with the HEMA uh, for wheel drive app, the old HEMA app where you can actually download all the maps and uh, the Topo 25,000K New South Wales maps. On the second bigger iPad, I also either run the HEMA or at the moment I'm running mud maps. Yeah. I also have an Alpine here, which is now not switched on, but which has also mapping software. There's a little dual battery monitor. Then we have uh, the compressor switch here, which obviously doesn't go on because the ignition is not on. I've got a switch for the rear light here. These are two custom locker switches. Oh, not switches, sorry, lights, which tell me where the locker is engaged. Because of my seating position, I can't really see whether my center diff lock uh, is engaged. So I have a little light here, which shows me my center diff is engaged. I also put in a TD5 Tacho RPM, uh, because the Defender by default doesn't have one. Then I've got the iPhone here. That is a remote control for my GoPro on the roof. Another in-cap GoPro. And on the other side goes my Spot 3. All the electrics, which on a Defender usually reside underneath here, are removed and are in these Margo Xbox. Here I have another three switches. One is for the rock lights underneath the car. One is for the seat, so I can manually switch the seat on and off, and one spare one. I also have a brake controller here for the trailer. Because I'm tall, this is an extended gear stick, makes it a bit more comfortable to shift gears. On the rear here, you see two speakers, which in combination with the upgraded uh, standard speakers, gives a reasonable good um, output. I also put in here an aftermarket net which allows me yeah, to have my torch, hand sanitizer and stuff like that. So um, smaller aftermarket Auto Technica wheel which uh, yeah, handles a bit better and gives a bit more room for the legs. This is a switch for the front LED lights and then you see another two switches here for the other driving lights. They're all hooked into the high beam, so I wrote legal. So that's pretty much how I routed the power to the roof. 
so no water ingress at all. Also inside here, if you remove the toast and my toothpaste, there's another light switch for this. And up there is another battery gauge for the third battery. 